Welcome back to Mad Monday, where I tell you all the cool mods worth playing and ditch the rest. It's been a bit of a roller coaster with the Alex mods these days, as the last couple of weeks have been pretty light. But boy, do we have a heck of a lineup this week. I bring you not one, not ten, but five sick dude mods this week. And while technically, yes, three of them have been around for a little while, they were in beta then, but now they're finished. So before we get into those sick dudes, let's start with the skins. The Black Mesa Glock 17 is probably one of my favorite skins for a weapon so far. Now this is not new, but it was released before I decided to start covering skins in these videos. So I went back and checked it out. The sound is basically ripped from Black Mesa, so I guess it sounds pretty good. But otherwise, it gets everything else right, such as the glowing magazines, the bullets displaying on top of the mag, and the night sights, which I say is absolutely necessary for any skin that wants to be taken seriously in this game. The adorable head crab skin is something that we have not seen so far, and I just have to say it is so cute. At least until you shoot at it, and then it gets angry, but still so cute. I like this skin, and while I probably won't use it all the time, I'll keep it on hand for the right moment. The MP7 skin is a bit bugged, so I can't really play sounds or anything as it wouldn't fire. However, I did want to let you know that it's here. It has a long way to go in terms of development, but the aesthetics look really cool. So originally, I thought that these GoldenEye mods were just going to be straight up remakes. But GoldenEye Alex 007-DAM Part 1 proves that wrong. It does sort of recreate the map from what it was in the original, but they've added so much more. The developers of this mod have taken their own spin, and they've added quite a unique flair to this. There were objectives the whole way through the map, which confirms that this is not just a generic shoot 'em up mod. It actually felt like each section of this map had its own little adventure, and with each objective presented to me, my excitement grew more and more. Despite the map not being so huge by itself, the creators of the mod made great use of the space by reusing pieces of it. I found the combat to be quite challenging, so I recommend taking your time and playing it slow. Rushing into battle here will get you killed very quickly. I think the creators are planning on adding music, but for now it looks like you'll have to play it on a YouTube channel by yourself. And the creators have actually given you a link to do so. I felt that even though my run through wasn't the greatest, because my gameplay was interrupted by several crashes, I was so enticed by this mod that I felt like I had to get in there and finish it. I don't think that the crashes are going to happen to everyone, it just happened to me, probably because something unrelated to the mod. I'd say that the entire map was fantastic, but my favorite part was definitely the beginning. Although there was nothing stealthy about it, the mod did simulate a sort of infiltration feel by letting you stumble upon the enemies and not the enemies stumbling upon you. The GoldenEye series is becoming one of my favorite mods to play, and I'm very excited to see what comes next. Speaking of GoldenEye, I replayed GoldenEye 64 Facility, and not only did they make many of the improvements that I mentioned in a previous video, but they added a ton more content. I actually tried to play this a couple times more in the past few weeks, but I could feel that it wasn't quite finished yet. Now it feels like a finished product. The frames per second is smooth, the music is in the game, and I don't feel like I have to grab for every bit of ammo that I see. They did make improvements to the whole map, but there are two rooms that they added straight up content to. And while these two rooms did seem very hectic because of all the enemies that they just crammed in there, it was still fun to just go guns a-blazing. There is one outstanding criticism for this mod, which is that many of the doors take forever to open. This is honestly not that big of a deal to me, especially when considering that the greatness of this map overshadows any little defects like this. Be prepared that the ending fight is an absolute shit show. Which reminds me, make sure to make your own saves. There aren't a lot of auto saves in this mod, and one of the last auto saves upon loading caused my game to crash several times. You should expect to have a difficult time or die a lot or both, so be prepared for that. Across the Coast version 1.5 was a very nice surprise this week. I've been craving for an Alex mod that just feels like Half-Life 2, and this is it. If you're a fan of Half-Life 2, you have to give this a shot. The music alone will make you feel right at home. The slow pace and eerie atmosphere just made me want to sit in this world for a little while. But eventually, the pace does speed up. I never thought I would be so mesmerized by a train passing by in VR. This marked the moment the mod became less about atmosphere and more about combat and puzzles. The pacing of the mod was nearly perfect for a Half-Life 2 style game. 
and it included much of the variety in playstyles that you'd find in one as well. There is one small oversight, which is the fact that you can jump on top of the console and then on top of the building. In doing so, you would never reach the ending of the mod. Not that the ending is all that spectacular, but you might feel lost if you don't proceed as planned by the creator. As a final note, I'll just throw this out there. I would love to see more mods with Half-Life 2 atmospheres. Mindbreak Chapter 2 slipped under my radar. Apparently it was finished a couple of weeks ago, but I'm guessing that since it has the same thumbnail as Chapter 1, I must have overlooked it. I don't think Chapter 2 wowed me as much as Chapter 1, but it did have some really awesome sequences. Just the sight of watching the vault doors close and open was awe-inspiring. Mods that incorporate the Antlands are pretty rare these days, so fighting them for a change is a refreshing change of pace. But I am not saying that I want to fight more Antlands. I think they're kind of an annoying enemy, but they're fun to fight in moderation. Chapter 2 did end pretty quickly, leaving me wanting just a little bit more to feel satisfied. Regardless, this is a unique and polished series that I hope to see more from in the near future. Brewery Break-In Brewery Break-In Jesus, why is this so hard to say? Anyway, this is a fantastic experience that's been in beta for several weeks now. I had been communicating with the author of the mod, and he finally finished it. Though he did say that one of the only things unfinished was some lighting at the end, so if you've already played it, you probably haven't missed much. If you haven't played it, well you're in for a ride. I'd like to say that this is one of the most polished mods that I've played so far. The objects, textures, and lighting are done so well that I think this could be an atmosphere only mod if it wanted to be. However, they didn't want it to be. And in fact, the pacing of the combat is also done so well that I would confuse it with the main Alex campaign. Also, the puzzle struck a perfect balance between intriguing and not annoying, something that's hard to come by in many of the mods that we see. My only gripe with this mod is that it seemed to end too quickly, but compared to other mods of its caliber, it was actually pretty average in length. And that is not what she said. But what she probably did say is that It's not about the length of the mod. It's about the quality of the experience. So let's all give a round of applause to Brewery Break-In. Brewery. Brewery Break-In. In Siege is another mod that had a long beta cycle. But after a little waiting, we got it to run without it crashing. This is a very combat heavy mod with some puzzle solving at the end. The entire mod is strangely separated by two loading sequences. And while I found this a bit jarring and it removed the immersion, it's really not that big of a deal. I think the one thing that this mod has going for it is that it lasts at a pretty daggone long time. So if you're looking for a long combat experience, this is the one for you. I did find the last bit of the map a bit annoying because there were tons of combine thrown into all the rooms. And combined with the tight hallways and the corridors and small rooms, I just felt very claustrophobic. I know that a lot of you out there would enjoy this mod, and like I said before, you'll especially like it if you want a long experience. My inner Half-Life fan wants to put the HEV suit tech demo dash Sector H into the really cool category, but it doesn't have the level of polish that it would need to make it there. I had a lot of fun exploring this map, and it felt nice to be part of the classic Half-Life universe again. It felt even more nice to step into that HEV suit with my virtual body. I mean, yeah, it's a bit of a gimmick in this mod as the level isn't really that developed, but I would love to see this concept worked on and added to a bit more. If you're a fan of Half-Life 1, I'm pretty sure you're going to like this, but if you're not a fan, I'm pretty sure you won't. Faculty Errand is a mod that I skipped over a couple weeks back, but only because it failed to load. I made a point to go back and try it out, and honestly, I'm glad I did because the mod page did not look very interesting and I could have easily just passed it over. We've seen several mods like this one before. You know, with not very much polish, corridor style level design, and lots of head crabs and combine to shoot at. There's really nothing that stands out from the crowd here, but if you just want something new to play this week, I think you'll have a good time. And that's all for the mod lineup. This week's mod maker advice is to not publish your mods until they are finished, or at least most of the way finished. Not only will I be unlikely to review a mod if it says beta or unfinished, but you're also risking giving some people a bad experience, which will in turn give your mod downvotes. A large number of players will see your mod within the first week, so you need to make a great first impression. If you just want people to try your mod for feedback, then that's fine but you can probably find mod testers out there just by asking around. 
And I'm curious, if I set up a Discord server for these Mod Mondays, would you mod creators out there be interested in a channel that makes it easier to find beta testers? Let me know if so, because I'd be happy to set that up if you like. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Until the next one, we'll be seeing you.